What's your favourite idea? Mine is being creative. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Institute. Uh, I've got a little project today. So this is called uh, Hui Chol Beat Art. I picked this up in Mexico, and I absolutely love it. I think it's um, really a fantastic piece of artwork. It comes from the Hui Chol tribe in Mexico. Uh, it's quite interesting. What they do is they take these forms, either it's a wooden carving, this one appears to be made of some sort of wooden particulate there, if it can focus on it, and uh, they take beeswax and layer it over and then apply bead by bead until a pattern is created. I think it's stunning. I think it's beautiful. I really like it, and I always like to pick up one of these pieces when I go to Mexico, but I've got a problem, and you might be able to see it. The problem is right here. See that? A bead's escaped on me. Can you believe that? So my problem is that it's not particularly hardy. I'd like it to be hardier. I want to preserve this piece of art uh, as much as possible. Uh, and the best way to do that, I think, is epoxy. So if we can put a nice thick layer of epoxy over all the beads, hopefully that will help the beads stick together and stop them from coming off at the very least the surface of it individually. So let's mix this up and see if it works. So our first step is going to be to prepare the surface for painting with epoxy. And we're going to do that with some alcohol wipes here. Again, very carefully not to dislodge any of the beads from the beeswax substrate underneath, holding them to the wooden surface. This is just to take off any grease, perhaps that came off of my fingers. Oh no, there's another missing one there. Look at that. Awful. You hate to see it. It's probably as clean as it's going to get without me dislodging any more beads. A little bit of air duster. To get rid of any of the threads from the uh, layer on there. All right. Now this is a two-part epoxy resin purchased from, you guessed it, AliExpress, uh, and I'm going to be mixing it up. I'm just going to mix uh, 20 cc's or 20 milliliters inside of this little cup here, and uh, we'll see if that covers this entire mask's surface, and uh, we can move on from there. Uh, now, of course, last thing I want to do is get uh, epoxy all over my workbench, so we're just going to put down a garbage bag. There we go. and put down this nice piece of scrap plastic so I can use that as a surface to put this on. So if any epoxy drips off of it while it's uh, curing, uh, that way it's not gonna stick to the plastic and cause an even larger mess. All right, we've stirred up our epoxy for about five minutes. Now let's get the brushes out and uh, get going. I don't know if this is going to work. I will be very pleased if it does, but I will not be shocked if it fails. Uh, what's the best brush size? Let's go with... Let's go with... This guy. Yeah. Looks good to start. So I'm going to start, I think, from the top, and then work my way to the bottom, and then maybe I can just get the chin while it's sitting on the table. Let's see. All right, all right, that's not looking bad. I just want to be sure that I um, get in between the beads with the epoxy for maximum sticktivity. It's the most important thing. I'm sure this setup could be better. I'm sure there's better ways to go about doing it, but I don't know them. I'm sure it would be easier if I just, you know, poured the epoxy out over this. Um, but I want to be really sure it gets in between the beads, so... That's why I'm doing it this way. I 
I'm not too worried about it dripping to the back side. Huh. Not sure if I like how that looks. I'm not sure if this is an improvement. Well, too late to stop. Ah, oh, I touched it. Shit. Okay, I think I got all the beads. Yeah, looks to all be done. <clears throat> Alright, uh, oh. Nope, missing some bits here. Let's see. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Well, let's see how that looks in the morning. The next day. All right, uh, it is morning time. I left this overnight, and let's see how everything turned out. We have uh, our, oh, yeah, there we go. There's our little thing of epoxy. That's not going anywhere. Hard as rock. This is the first time I've worked with clear epoxy like this, just to let you know. So I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to see how it goes. Decided to paint another little model with it. Looks kind of cool. Anywho, the piece de resistance. Uh, it is glued to the backing here. This is... Okay, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness me. It'd be a shame if I were to, you know, cut off any of the beads after trying to do a project to protect them. Because I glued this to the board. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, good thing I put it on this plastic. Now I just have to get all those drippies off. But, all in all, oh come on, don't take the beads off with you. All right, not bad, not bad. Yeah, it tore a bit at the wood, but that's okay. Let's see though. I'm actually pretty, pretty jazzed with this. I'm pretty happy. When I left last night to let it cure, um, I didn't like how shiny it was. I, it kind of looked really cheap and didn't really make the beads look any better, but this is honestly not that bad. And man, yeah, it's it's going to be way hardier. Beads are going to be way, way hardier and hopefully stop falling out. But yeah, I think that's pretty impressive. I think it looks good. Let's get some close-ups there for you. Okay, epoxy to protect Huchwell bead art. I would say, yeah. Yeah, if you if you like the way this looks, if you think this is uh, an acceptable look for it, I also like I like how the, uh, the little bits of epoxy that form flat layers sort of make it almost faceted. Um, yeah, I think that's a really cool look. Uh, I thought this project was going to be a failure when I left last night, and it appears not to be which makes me pretty happy. All right. Um, 
I think that's all for today. Like, share, and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Have yourselves a good one. Uh, I'll see you next time. Now let's all agree to never be creative again. Mm.